Hello, this is Aquarian Anarchy, and this is actually taped after the video, the rest of the video you're about to watch. The reason is because this video largely is about war with Iran and the idea of telling the world no, you know, telling Donald Trump no, telling the government of the United States no, that this is all bull and all of that. Well, unfortunately, as you probably know, Iran has retaliated against the, the United States and attacked interests in Iraq. Um, I have to add this to the front of the video, the analysis that I get into about what is, is, is now happened. And one of the things I am about to say in this video is that this was already planned. Come on, people. It takes a whole lot longer than a few days to mobilize a military force. And presto, they're ready, and Iran just attacked. So just wait. The um, Iranian forces, I'm sure, um, will be demonized, and I'm not saying that Iran's good. They're not. All governments are bad. But they uh, have successfully started another war in the Middle East. So much for Trump being anti-interventionist. Huh. Inter ew, just makes me so mad. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the video. You will get my analysis of what led up to this, and... Um, Stay free, my friends. Hi, this is Aquarian Anarchy, and I'm Marcus Pulis. And today I've got some exciting things to talk about, but I've also got some not-so-exciting things to talk about. Um, notice the studio is getting updated a bit. Um, behind me I have our logo. T-shirts, got one of our shirts from our store. It's all exciting. Um, starting to put some things together uh, for our production going forward. Notice I said hour. I'm not going to be alone very much longer. Um, I've got a couple people lined up, actually a few people lined up to help me co-host occasionally this show. Eventually, I'm hoping uh, in early February, my goal was to try to do that uh, either beginning of January to middle of February because of holidays and other issues. Wasn't able to do that quite yet, but I uh, do plan on doing it for February 1st, uh, or fe Feb the 1st of February won't be the 1st exactly. Um, we're going to record and deliver news every week. Every single week you will see Aquarian Anarchy and it will hopefully happen like clockwork, and eventually my, our goal is to move towards um, having guests, doing interviews, and having some of those interviews also involve uh, the guest in you know commenting about the news. The segments are going to be pretty simple. The first 15 minutes to a half an hour, depending on how many people we've got, whether it's just me and one other peer person or me and two other people, uh, the first segment, which will either be 15 minutes or a half an hour, will be devoted to the news, to what's going on right now, today. As an example, as soon as I get done with this introduction, I'm going to go straight to uh, the news of the day. Now today, I'm not going to worry so much about timing. It's going to take however long it's going to take. And uh, and that's the way it is. My goal is to offer a relatively professional um, show that is informative and gives voluntarists, anarchists, and libertarians somewhere to go to get the news that comes from a from a voluntarist perspective. Um, in the past, you know, you can say, well, I want the, the truth and I want, you know, facts. That's impossible. It, is, it isn't just that the news media is slanted by government. That is certainly true. They deal with propaganda all the time. They're pushing an agenda, for sure. 
but a lot of it is just that they happen to be liberals or conservatives, and so they give that perspective. Well, this will be my perspective, and I'm a voluntarist. Um, so that's the perspective you're going to get. That's going to be the commentary you're going to get. So we're going to cover the news and whatever is current, and then we're going to talk about whatever we want to talk about, whether that's, you know, something diving deep into the news or something that is more involved with like spirituality or voluntarist ideas or whatever we want to talk about. You know, I've talked about family on this channel before. So there will be a variety of different things that we will talk about in that section. But you can count on the first 15 minutes to a half an hour of being nothing but news. So that's the pattern that I'm going to set forward. One thing I would like to invite you to do is like and share this video. Um, I need as much help as I can get. I'm not trying to make money. This, is, this isn't going to be monetized. Facebook and uh, YouTube are going to attack me anyway. If anybody has watched some of my previous videos, you already know I'm pretty much demonetized, or not demonetized, deplatformed on Facebook anyway. So th that's not going to be in my goal set. Um, trying to make money, but everybody likes money. If you want, if you're watching this on BitChute, tip. If you have want to give me some uh, some cryptocurrency, comment. I'll set you up. Uh, and I, I strongly suggest you follow the links that will be in the bottom of this video, as with a lot of of other things. Buy a T-shirt. Go to my store. And get cool stuff like this shirt and and like that banner behind me. Um, doesn't just have to have you know uh, voluntarist stuff or uh, Aquarian anarchy stuff on it. There's quotes. There's all kinds of stuff. Anyway, go check that out. So that being said, I'm ready for the news. So it's been an interesting week, and it's been a week that has made me very excited and. Uh, very um, angry. Um, as most people, unless you live in a cave, know um, an Iranian general was killed in Iraq in a targeted strike by the United States. We we're being fed a bunch of stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and read you from the New York Times the basic premise of the beginning of this. This is directly from the New York Times. Iran's top security and intelligence commander was killed early Friday in a drone strike at Baghdad International Airport that was authorized by President Trump, American officials said. And I'm going to skip around a little bit just to get to the details, but the commander, Major General Qasim Soleimani, who led the powerful Quds Force of Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, was killed along with several officials from Iraqi militia, militias backed by Tehran when an American MQ-9 Reaper drone fired missiles into a convoy that was leaving the airport. General Soleimani was the architect of nearly every significant operation by Iranian intelligence and military forces over the past two decades, and his death was a staggering blow for Iran at a time of sweeping geopolitical conflict. In Iran, the leadership convened, and I'm going to, before I go on, he basically was second in charge. Everywhere I've seen has said he was pretty much second in charge. So, in, 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 But his job is different. This isn't just like going after the vice president of the United States. Most of us know the vice president really doesn't have that much power. Um, this would be more like going after several members of the leadership, including the, the head of the CIA or the head of, of um, uh, military intelligence, Two words combined that can't make sense, um, but <laughs> to, to quote Megadeth, but um, but it, he was a very important person within their government, um, and, and they're pissed. So to continue on with what the New York Times had to say, they said, in Iran, the leadership convened an emergency security meeting, and the country's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, issued a statement calling for three days of public mourning and, re and then retaliation. 
I'm recording this on Tuesday after the events that happened Thursday to Friday. So it's been three days. There's not been any major um, attacks. There's been a few small ones, but nothing major. But I have no doubt that they're coming. This is what he had to, what they had to say. Quote, his departure to God does not end his path or his mission, mission end quote. The statement said, quote, but a forceful revenge awaits the criminals who have his blood and the blood of the other martyrs last night on their hands. That's awful. You know, they're, they're, they're absolutely falling right into, and by they I mean the United States government, into the pattern of making this guy a martyr. They, they said as much. He is going to be a, a lightning rod to just sweep people against the United States, and, and rightly so. The bottom line is, if the, somebody was doing this to our government and was coming after, you know, if, if let's say Pompeo or somebody like that went overseas and Iran assassinated him with a missile, we'd be calling for heads. And by we, I mean the government, because we are not the government, as Murray Rothbard pointed out. But the United States government would be calling for heads to roll. They, you know, there'd be people getting on ships and flying in planes. The restraint that these people are showing is massive. You know, um, my friend Adam Kokesh recently uh, posted a video, and I'll have to get the, the link and post it down below. There was an older video from the Obama days that pretty much said the same thing. That these people have had to have had restraint for all of the things that we have done to them. So to continue, um, quote, General uh, Suleimani was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members in Iraq throughout the region, the Pentagon said in a statement, quote, General Suleimani and his Quds force were responsible for the deaths of hundreds of Americans and coalition service members and the wounding of thousands more. It did not elaborate, end quote, it did not elaborate on the specific intelligence that led to carrying out General Suleimani's killing. Of course not, because they just made it up. This is all bull. This is all smoke and mirrors, and I'll get to some of the whys in a minute, but it's all bull. This is all untruths. It's all propaganda. It's all war propaganda designed, just like they've been trying to do for as long as I can remember, trying to get us into war with Iran because of a variety of reasons, including oil, including um, political power, because we're friends with Israel and Saudi Arabia, or the United States is friends with Saudi Arabia and, and Israel, because I'm not, because neither one of those people have any of my family's uh, interest in mind. So, and nor does any other government. So, so, of course, they can't elaborate because they made it up you know, or they haven't got the story written yet, whichever one it is. So, speaking to reporters while on vacation at his mar largo resort in Palm Beach, Florida on Tuesday night, hours after, that should be Thursday night, after an assault on American embassy in Baghdad, the United States officials said was orchestrated by Iran. Mr. Trump, who was repeatedly vowed to end American tanglements in the Middle East, insisted that he did not want war. Quote, I did not think that would be a good idea for Iran. It wouldn't last very long, end quote. It's not like he didn't, you know, he, I, he, he's just all about not wanting war, isn't he? Not a good idea for Iran. It's a threat. There's no, I don't want to go to war in that. That's all a threat. Anyway, he continues, do I want to? No, I want to have peace. I like peace. No, he doesn't. You, From the beginning, this dude has, he used a Moab, mother of all bombs, right out of the gate, dropped the largest conventional weapon that that has ever existed on the Afghanis. This isn't, he's not, not wanting war. I mean, John Bolton never saw a war he didn't love, and he put him in his administration. Mike Pompeo is a big neocon. All of these people are the same. There's nothing different. 
you know, people say, oh, but imagine what it would been like if Hillary had won. The same. The, the, the same things happen. It does not matter who's elected. Emma Goldman said, uh, politicians promise you heaven before election and give you hell after. And that's definitely what's going on. So Defense Secretary Mark T. Espers, who said the United States military would preemptively strike Iranian-backed forces in Iraq and Syria, and they had everybody. This Iranians, everybody. You know, they're the new Al Qaeda. Then they're the new, new ISIS. Then now it's all the Iranians are the bad guys. Oh, anyway, so anyway, he said. Uh, that we that the United States would preemptively strike Iranian-backed forces in Iran, Iraq, and Syria if there were signs that the paramilitary groups were planning more attacks against American bases and personnel in the region. Quote: If we get word of attacks, we will take preemptive action as well to protect American forces, protect American lives. Mr. Epsper said, "The game has changed." End quote. They planned it. There's no, the, the game didn't play it. change. This is the same game they've been playing. The American people just didn't buy it. And they're trying to roll it out in a new package. It's like, it's like when they find a crappy candy bar that nobody wants to eat. They put new packages on it and throw it out, see if somebody will eat it. Because the package matters. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. The Pentagon statement Tuesday night said that General Soleimani had orchestrated attacks on coalition bases in Iraq over the last several months, including the one that killed the American contractor last week. Luke we are, from We Are Change pointed out that, that, it does, that they're waiting for the retaliation. He had a video, the link will be in, the, in below. But he's absolutely right. And one of the things that I'm going to do in this production is I don't trust mainstream media. It's all propaganda. I like the alternative media. Sure, some of them aren't professional. I'm not getting there yet, but I will. And But I do like some of them, and We Are Change is one of them that does the research, does what they need to do to give good news. So I'm going to use them when I can in preference over the mainstream media because at least they tend to be more honest in their coverage. And I'm talking about the, the alternative media. So I'm going to use people like We Are Change, who I'm currently using. So Luke, in his video, basically talked about that, that this is all set in the stage. And that's absolutely what is going on. They're just like, we just attacked your guy, now don't hit us back. If you hit us back, we're really going to hit you. And that's all they're saying. They're just pushing this, looking for an excuse. Well, we had to hit them back because they hit us. Well, that's like walking up to somebody on a... On, a, on the playground, punching them and saying, you can't hit me back or I'm going to beat your ass. That's all bull. That is all what's going on. And one of the things I found interesting, and again, this is another, uh, this is an article that I found from antiwar.com, another alternative media. They report that Suleimani was in the process of brokering peace talks between Saudi Arabia and Iran. The U.S. government could not allow that. Oh, no. We can't have peace. If we have peace, then we can't expand empire. We need an enemy. If people start, just like in Saudi Arabia now, if the United States government wasn't constantly causing half the population to get up in arms and look at the enemy that they see, then... We would then then we would focus on our government. We would focus on the people in Washington D.C. who are the enemies of the American people. They constantly are stripping away all of our rights, all of our our, our constitutional protected rights. That's all bunk. They burned that thing a long time ago. People ought to get used to it. But that being said, that's what they're doing. They are absolutely setting this up to be a, a continual war. The, I mean, we <laughs> it's 2020, and we have been at war since, I mean, actively at war since 2001. 
you know, this is perpetual war, right? It's, it's 1984 over and over and over again. And we couldn't allow. It wasn't in our interest, or frankly, the interest of Israel. It wasn't in the United States' interest or the interest of Israel to have peace in that region because then they can't control people. They can't get their their businesses controlled. So, of course, they took him out in a peace talk. Duh. That's what they do because these are monsters. The United States government is nothing more than a band of bandits who are murdering thieves. It is what it is. Another question that I came up with is, could all of this have had something to do with the 53 billion barrels of, barrels of oil that Iran just found? That's BBC. They just found an extra 53 billion barrels of oil in Iran. We got to bring them from freedom. Everybody that winds up with oil that isn't under our th under the United States' thumb, well, we gotta get deliver them some freedom with bullets because we need that oil. So I think that has a whole lot more to do with it than anything else. So how did Iraq respond? This happened in Iraq. Well, the answer to that is they got mad. You know the <laughs> the, the Iraqis don't really want us there anyway. I mean, it's not like they invited us in. It's not like the Iraqis were like, hey guys, come over. We just kind of like you to hang out. We need your protection. Iran sucks. Don't get me wrong. Iran does suck. And I'm not trying to defend Iran. I'm trying to say war is murder and stop lining people up in different colored uniforms and killing each other for corporate interests and government control. This is all bull. So anyway, how did the Iraq respond? The Iraqi parliament passed a resolution, not binding, but still a resolution that is the will of their people to kick the United States out. They said, go home, Yankee, go home, get out. We don't want anything to do with you because you're, you're ruthless, murdering, sadistic thieves. Th that's what our military is being used for. They're, they're guarding heroin in Afghanistan and enslaving the entire Middle East. This has got to end. It's got to end and it's got to end now. So Trump responded to all of this in truly Trumpish ways. Trump responded like a schoolyard bully saying that they will have to pay for the bases they did that that we built because we're so nice we needed military bases in your country so we built those for you and if you want us to leave you're gone go ahead and have to kick us out then he added to that he said iran you don't want to scrap we're going to attack your cultural sites when did that become a good idea when did when when was it acceptable to say you know what we're gonna ruin your you know how many times have we heard that these rebels the ISIS and all this this they're, they're destroying old Sumerian things and raiding museums and damaging stuff and destroying Christian stuff and doing all we've heard it a million times right so now we're gonna threaten it. And I, I know, I know, these evil, evil Muslims, well, they've been doing it. It's about time we do something. So when did two wrongs suddenly make a right? In my world, it doesn't. This is just all wrong. Ultimately, as always, this is, again, nothing more than smoke and mirrors. It is nothing more than them setting a stage for the war they want and have wanted for a really long time. While all this is going on, they have de they have deployed B-52 bombers to the Indian Ocean to a base in anticipation of war. This is all bull. They, they have, they're getting ready because they know that they're getting ready. They, you, know, you know, we just decided and everybody rolled out the next day. Oh, come on. Who believes that? Who, who really believes that we just suddenly, suddenly, oh, oops, we're going to roll out some military tomorrow. 
like they weren't already on their way. It, it, this is all setting the stage for expanding empire. Now, a friend of mine, Chad Lemoyne, good guy, um, he sent me an article that ties into this, and I think it ties into this really well. And it also ties into um, what's going on in Virginia. And if you don't know, again, we'll put some links in the bottom. But in Virginia, the governor is trying to take away guns. And the people are like, to hell with you. No, you're not taking my guns. You're not doing it. And it's getting deep. Well, Chad sent me this article. And in it, it says, quote, it's about the UN being hired to, to disarm the American people, the UN. So I'm going to read. This is directly from there. Links will be in the bottom. Quote, the United Nations is now accepting job applications in New York City, New York, for disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration officers to, quote, contribute to the security and stability in post-conflict environments. In the United States, post-conflict environments. In the United States. In New York. Hello? <laughs> so... The job listing was posted to the UN Careers homepage on December 26th, so right around this time. You know that all of these plans have been, been ready to roll out, and they chose to wait after the new year to do it. So, anyway, since December 26th, applicants eager to conduct DDR field missions are required to have Quote, seven years of relevant experience in disarmament affairs. Who has a degree in disarmament affairs? Anyway, political analysis or in national military or paramilitary service. In other words, you can be a vet or you can be in Blackwater. You can be a mercenary and we'll, we'll put you out there and for the UN to steal people's guns. So, anyhow, so in an advanced uh, and an advanced degree, master's degree or equivalent degree in disarmament affairs, military studies, political affairs, economics, international relations, or a related field, like slavery, a related field, you know, like enslaving a population, you know, just the, the thing you run in the mill, pick up at the local uh, community college, right? Key components of the DDR, as defined by the UN, include disarming the civilian population and, quote, the development of responsible arms management programs from the UN in the United States, and the implementation of mass detainment camps. This is not, you know, this isn't like some kind of conspiratorial craziness. This is a job application for the UN. It is coming, people. You know, people talk about the boogaloo. I don't want all that. I want a peaceful transition. I want to peacefully dissolve the federal government and get back to all of that. So, but come on. These people are violent. Remember, we just talked about what they're doing overseas. They ain't a whole lot closer to us. And if you don't think for a moment that they will do the exact same thing to grandma and your kids, you are sadly mistaken because they always have. And, and, and big always. You know, look at what they did to the Japanese. Deter in internment camps. You know, <laughs> in this country. The, the, none of this is new. This is what governments do. And frankly, I'm sick of it. So, UN hopefuls hoping to work in New York and contribute to the security and stability in post-conflict environments can submit their applications to become DDR officers December 2019 through February 2020. Be careful of March. The Ives of March are with us because look into me like that's when they're ready. 
So why are these connected? If you have a population that is saying no, if you have a population that has refused to hand over their weapons, if you have a population, they know that Americans are a lot less likely to take from Americans. So they are trying to get the UN to do it. The bottom line is all of these people, the, the people that think that this is Trump or this is, this is the Democrats or whatever, it's both of them. It is government itself. This is nothing more than divide and conquer that is being employed against you. So you sh you start you stop you start arguing with your neighbor instead of looking at what's going on. It's all distraction. Everything that you see in the news media is. So you need to start paying attention. You need to start paying attention now. Now, am I a big fear monger? Worried about only that and, and blah blah blah? No. I'm not. It's not. It's it's not my gig. So, but I, I I am hopeful for the future. So moving forward, the final thing that I wanted to talk about in the news section is going to be pretty short, and then I'm going to get into some analysis from before the 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 subject at hand, and that is the Democratic debates. You know, you would think that. You know, with all of this craziness that, that is Donald Trump and, you know, Cheeto Jesus is out there inflaming the Democrats, you would think they could come up with a decent damn candidate. But they can't. They do not have a good candidate. It's because it's all controlled. They plan on losing. The bottom line is, th this is, again, all just smoke and mirrors. They plan on losing to Donald Trump so he can have his eight years, and who knows what happens after that. I sure, certainly do not. But that is the plan, to, to keep him in office so he can keep causing the kind of damage because there is nobody better at distraction than Donald Trump. They've got people fighting about Russia, and they got people worried about emails and all this other crap that does not matter. Meanwhile, they're getting ready to bomb more people who didn't do anything. They're getting ready, <laughs> you know, it's the, of course, they're, they're distracting. But the Democratic debate happened. I went and I looked at it. It was boring. These There was no real substance. Sure, they attacked each other. This guy's calling this guy that, you know, between, you know, the only person that had any any inkling of a, uh, of a peace message wasn't on the stage. You know, like they, they didn't let Tulsi Gabbard on there, just like they tried not to let Ron Paul on, on the stage. These people that think that they can work within the duopoly are retarded, and it's not going to happen. Okay? It's just not going to happen. The, those people want to rule you, and it is all of them, every one of them. And, you know, one of the, the funniest things, and let's, let's go through some of these people, that, you know, because really that Pete Butta guy, he is, he's, Mayor Pete is not real. He's never going to come anywhere near the office. Even if they decide at the last minute, like they did with Trump, that, that, he, that he's going to win, well, you know what? He, he, or a Democrat's going to win. He's never going to win. Uh, Yang, never going to win. He's not going to win. Doesn't really matter. The only ones that really stand a chance at winning the nomination are uh, Joe Biden, who stands a real chance at winning. I have no idea how. That dude can't keep his hands off of kids. Uh, Elizabeth Warren and, uh, and Bernie Sanders. So, none of them, again, talks about, talked about anything except for what can we give you. That's all they talked about. And, and I'll get to some of that in a moment. But, um, but there was no real substance, no real, this is what's going to happen, and this is going to happen this way, and then all that kind of stuff. None of that. Just, you know, demagoguing and just making pronouncements that they can't, they can't ever hope to, to deliver, just like Trump never intended, whether I agree with him or not, never intended on building a wall or getting rid of uh, Obamacare. Never was his intention. The, 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 Obamacare is a step. They'll eventually go away when they socialize medicine and everybody goes, they can't get any medicine. So, but 
those three are the only ones that have any chance of, of getting this. Biden, I don't know if he's lost his ever-loving mind. That dude must have forgotten that he and Barack Grunbaum are just bombed the crap out of brown people. He's like, let's do this, 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 all this stuff that Trump's done is just awful. And, and he, he did no real, he, he like, it's like this one's bad, but all the other bombs were fine. They had a little, they had a big O on them, you know. <laughs> he didn't make any sense at all. And I wonder if, if Joe's off his meds, to be honest. But, but anyway, he's probably going to be their, their, their guy. If it's not him, it's probably going to be Elizabeth Warren. And Elizabeth Warren's like, I'm, I'm fully funded by the people. Who in their right mind believes that? <laughs> How dumb do you have to be to not look at her and understand that she is funded by big banks and corporations? It's, it's not hidden <laughs> anywhere. She's not the little guy's person. No, she's the big guy's person. And she knows that she's all these socialist programs are going to benefit her buddies and her cronies, and it's all going to just destroy your life. She knows that. But she's got to pretend. The only one who in any way really seems to give two dams about the American people is Bernie Sanders. Probably going to lose. Come on. I'm pretty sure he almost died recently. You know, he did have a heart attack. I'm pretty sure he just about died. So I really don't think he's going to win. But he's got a better chance than Andrew Yang or Tulsi Gabbard does. So, <laughs> so yeah. And so, but Bernie, just like the other two, and by the way, Elizabeth Warren, when it comes to war, Oh my goodness, Biden was way better on it than her. She's taking Trump's words, saying stuff like that they, they had it coming, more or less. You know, <laughs> she is, she's not at all anti war, and I don't even know how anybody could twist it to make her anti war. I don't get it. She walked right into what Trump was saying, well, they were going to do this, and all the bull crap. Bernie at least talks like he do not want to start a war. Now, He's going to be fully counted because he likes to go back to 2002 where he didn't vote for, for, for the, uh, you know, for the war. Except for that he did. <laughs> and then he funded it. You know, he voted to give authorization to George W. Bush to invade Iraq. He did. That, that's a fact. You know, <laughs> hello, <laughs> morons. These people just don't. I don't know. I don't know how they how they function because they're not paying much attention. So nothing, nothing at all coming from them. I'm a libertarian. I work for Adam Kokesh. Adam's a good friend of mine. I will be voting for Adam at the Libertarian National Convention. I'm proud of my party. You know, I'm, I'm an anarchist, and the only reason I'm voting or being involved is because I believe that we get on the stage. We get on the stage, we convince more people, because they're going to do everything they can to stack the deck against us. But the more people we get convinced that government is the problem and not the solution, the stronger the American people are and the more likely we evolve. It's a very simple process, and I believe in what Adam's talking about. I believe that the, the federal government can be dissolved. And I'm not trying to just harp on Adam, because I know that there's going to be some people that watch this that are anarchists that don't vote. Okay, don't vote. I don't care. I, the, I'm not trying to twist your arm to go vote for Adam or, or Vermin Supreme or Dan Behrman or Kim Ruff. None of those people. I'm not trying to get you to do that. And if you think that work, might work or if you want to give it a chance, come on board. Join somebody. I don't care. Because the point is to get that message out and to convince people that you own yourself. And all of those people are doing that. What's more is all of those people are anti-war. And they're really anti-war. See, none of the other people are actually anti-war. They might be anti-this war, 
You know, they might be like, just like they were anti the war back when Bush was president, because they're not anti war. They're anti Trump now was anti Bush. That's that, it is what it is. They, they use it as a political tool because, because the left largely is against war. The, the, the people, the people, I'm not talking about the, the politicians, all those people are warmongers. But but ultimately, a lot of the liberals have not been duped by this, this building of empire. So they've got to pretend while a Republican's in office and then shove it under the rug when Obama's in there, some other Democrat comes along or, you know, uh, Clinton's attacking Kosovo and all that craziness. So <laughs> So basically... What I'm saying is you do have a chance to, to vote if you choose to. And, you know, obviously I work for Adam and, and, I, and he's going to be my candidate, but all of them are good. And all of them are uh, in, a, in a very narrow field. I'm not, I'm, I'm not here saying Lincoln Chafee is good. He said he's going to be anti-war and he didn't vote and all that. Okay. He's still not libertarian, so I'm going to vote for him. But, <laughs> but... I'll be nice to him, or I get a chance to meet him, just like Bill Weld. I'll be, I'll be like, okay, I don't really need to talk to you, but that's okay. I'll let Adam talk to him. He's better at it. So, <laughs> it's because I'm not trying to. But ultimately, uh, the, the real libertarians in the room, and I pretty much named them, and if I miss somebody, I'm sorry, uh, Arvind Bora. And the real libertarians in the, in, in the room, which is Adam Kokesh, um, Kim Ruff, Vermin Supreme, Dan Behrman, and Arvind Vora. Those real libertarians are anti-war. And hopefully one of them gets the nomination. Obviously, I want to see the, uh, the, the agenda of dissolving the federal government on it. But at least you have an anti-war ca candidate coming from the Libertarian Party more than likely. So that concludes the news for today. I'm going to finish up in, and it's just going to be a, a small portion of this video. And, but I kind of wanted to talk about something I saw on last Thursday. This is, uh, this is actually before the, the war stuff hit. Um, it was on The View. Uh, Whoopi came out. This is uh, The View, uh, January 2nd. She said, quote, I don't want to hear you come... And she was talking about the the uh, Democratic debates. And she was making... Com they were making different back and forth uh, comments. And Whoopi said... And, and uh, to be clear, I don't watch The View. The reason I saw The View is my wife had a dental appointment. <laughs> I was sitting in there confined and had to watch The View. But, hey, use every opportunity to learn. So I did. And anyway, Whoopi said, quote, I don't want to hear you coming down on this one. He's too old. He's too wide. He's, she's too big. He's too fat. I don't want to hear any of that. You know, I'm on board with that. That's some bull. You know, to... You know, talking about how somebody's looks does not matter when talking about if they're going to be a good leader. And I don't believe in government. And I don't believe in any of that. But, you know, just to give that, none of that, you know, none of that stuff matters. It doesn't matter what somebody looks like. It matters what policies they're going to, to put forth if you're going to believe in those sorts of things. So she went on, though, and ruined it all. She said, quote, I want to, I want you to tell me, she's talking to the, to the candidate. She said, I want you to tell me, how are you going to, going to return me to having a little money in my pocket for working 9,000 hours a day? She's being a little dramatic. That woman has never worked nine, you know, 10 hours in a day, much less 9,000 because anyway, but she's being dramatic. 9,000 hours a day. I want you to tell me, how you're going to help my family move. Oh, she's getting at this point. But anyway, she says, even if it's just this way, how are you going to help me move forward? What are you going to do for me as an American? That's it right there. What are you going to do for me? What you going to do? 
How you gonna buy me off? Tell me what you're gonna give me. I need me some stuff. Tell me. You know, I did a series of articles for Adam called the Forgotten Freedom Fighter series. In that, two of my favorites were when I covered Native Americans, and I'll put the links down below. One of them was Red Cloud, who was a Sioux warrior who defeated the United States government in a two-year war. And the United States government and military unconditionally surrendered to Red Cloud. Most people don't know about that. They did. We lost, or they lost. They lost, the federal government had to surrender 100%. Read it. It's good. It's a good read. In that, that, that article, one of the things that I learned while doing research for it was how much they enslaved the Native American population that caused um, Red Cloud and the Sioux to rise up. And how they did it was by giving them things. They gave them blankets, they gave them food, they gave them till they were dependent. And then when they were dependent and they couldn't do things on their own, they stripped it away. That's what governments do. Now, again, that happened in Arizona with Geronimo, the other Native American that I wrote a piece on. And the difference between Red Cloud and Geronimo is Geronimo lost. Well, it's pretty bad. He was enslaved and, in, and kept in a camp for most of his life. You know, they made him all kinds of promises. They tried to kill him a bunch of times. Again, you can read it. I won't, I don't, I'm not going to sit down. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to give up. I learned from Geronimo. Geronimo was a wonderful man. Good freedom fighter. But he lost. And how he lost was by trusting government and thinking that the American government was going to be different than any other government. I'm not going to make that mistake. And we can learn from these two heroes. We can learn from the, the experiences of Native Americans throughout history, um, whether you're talking about the Cherokee, and which is my blood, who um, were more or less wiped out in, in the Trail of Tears, you know, forced migration and killed thousands. That's what government does. So I'm going to end this with a quote. And it, as it relates to uh, Whoopi's, you know, call to gimme, gimme, gimme. Why do you, what are you going to use to buy me off? It's by Murray Rothbard. Rothbard said, government, quote, government was constructed neither for the ability nor the exercise of loving care. Government was built for the use of force and for the necessarily demagogic appeals for votes. Don't fall for it. Voting is not going to make you free. It's not. Do I support Adam? Absolutely. 100%. He's a good friend. He's got the right idea. Voting is not going to make you free. People who are refusing to be governed will make you free. Stand up. Do what you can. Stand on your own. Deny any time you can strip any payment to the government. Avoid taxes in every way that you can. Stop feeding the beast in, in any way you can. I know that it's hard. It's hard for me. But stop doing it. Oppose murder. War is nothing more than state-sponsored mass murder, and it has got to end. It is the worst thing government does, and it needs to stop. No war with Iran. If you like this video, please like, share, comment. Um, again, visit our store. And I look forward to the future of this this program and I look forward to bringing on my co-hosts and having a discussion instead of just me rattling on for an hour or so. This one's been about 48 minutes. Be free.